And then he um, forced me um, into sexual exploitation, took me to brothels, tried to make me do things that I didn't want to do. I was so scared for my life because I was 16. I just didn't know anything else. And that's when he took my mate out into the, um, the woods, severely beat her back of black and blue. She was bleeding, she was like, and then he had a gun and he said, if you don't do what I'm telling you to do, this is gonna happen to you or worse. At points I just thought, I'm gonna lose my life or something really serious is gonna happen to me. My dad was an alcoholic, so I saw a lot of violence at home. Uh, my mum was beaten severely daily. But then she used to sell a bit of this and a bit of that. And that's where I started getting into that field because I saw the money that she was making. Literally got on him, yeah, and bit his nose so thing that I felt the flesh. It was, flesh. It still it was cut literally now. hanging, if you can see yeah. there, because it was hanging. And I'm shutting things down. People that are taking liberties, people are taking advantage. I'm shutting it down. I'm bringing the truth on the scene. Think with me, but I had my thing down. Any man wants it, follow me outside. Your money's in a safety deposit box and I swallowed the key. So you have to come and get it. <laughs> Mel was one of the elite people that people respected and everyone used so to get strange. their bits and pieces anyway. So I said, put it in your bag, let's go. So went on our way, driving through Hamel Hampstead then we get pulled over and like my heart was pounding and I was Why? thinking because I had I had things on me and I was thinking oh my god this is it can you open the boot and I was like yeah sure so I opened the boot and I was like have you got anything in this car that you shouldn't have and I was like no So I was living this lifestyle, I had all the money, I had all the people around me. I felt um, untouchable. So you've heard Dwayne's story about the madness in Slough and the radical transformation he went through after getting his head run over by a car, after getting stabbed, shot, macheted, you name it, he went through it. He was completely fearless. But the strength of being in a partnership, the love of a good woman contributed to his path. And now we're going to hear the other side from Mel. We're going to hear Mel's story. And Mel became a kingpin in Slough. And then these guys met and you know what happened from the a little bit from the last one. So, huge thank you for coming on, guys. Thank, thank you. you again. Thank you. Mel, I hate to start out someone that's really dark in your life, but you did, you know, mention with these stories um, that you wanted to start out with something that happened to you when you was a teenager. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, when I was 16, um, I just moved. So, I lived in Suffolk, and then I moved back to Slough, um, where I was originally from, and I wanted to be with my family and I moved into a supported housing. So I was there in supported housing with my friends, everything was, was all good. Um, and then, you know, drinking, doing drugs and things like that. Um, her boyfriend was a lot older than she was and he was a bit of a crazy guy. Uh, he used to do a lot of drugs, have guns, be in that kind of world. And then he um, forced me um, into sexual exploitation, um, took me to brothels, tried to make me do things that I didn't want to do. I was so scared for my life because I was 16. I just didn't know anything else. And um, yeah, he would take me there, drop me off and then pick me up later. But when I was in the brothels, the women used to hide me because... I was like, I don't want to do this. And they were really lovely, the girls were, and they used to hide me. So when he used to pick me up and I'd have no money, he used to go mad. And he'd say, where are your nick in the money? And I was like, really like, you know, scared. And then he raped me and then took me back to my supported living house, picked up my 
best one of my really good friends and took us to what you know what Dwayne said Burnham Beaches took us to Burnham Beaches and that's when he took my mate out into the um the woods severely beat her back of black and blue she was bleeding she was like and then he had a gun and he said if you don't do what I'm telling you to do this is going to happen to you or worse so at that point it was just I just didn't know what to do but in the supported housing we've got people that live there and support you and I said to my friend I can't do this I cannot go through this no more this is I can't do it so I told someone and they shipped us out for three months so that was your mate's older boyfriend older was boyfriend, it yeah how did he, he come onto scary. the scene in the first place so she like because I had only moved back and I wasn't like, didn't know anyone in the area, she obviously knew a lot more people than me because I moved for three years. So I knew I didn't know anyone really. It was starting new friends again. But my friend was living in that same supported housing as me. And then I got to like be friends with her again. And that's when I was introduced to him and his friends. And that's really where it all started. Looking. And it was just such a terrific, honestly, it was just so terrifying. Um, at points, I just thought I'm going to lose my life or something really serious is going to happen to me. And was I he pulling just... weapons on you and stuff? So the weapon was there out when he when he took my um, friend into the woods. So I just thought, you know, I'm just going to end up something bad's going to happen to me, and I just couldn't do it any longer. And so, were you aware of any other girls who he's targeting? So I think now, looking back, he's had girls that he's raped in the past and had girlfriends that he's done a lot of abuse to. Um, so, yeah, because it, it was one of my friend's um, cousins. So when we moved um, like out the area for three months and moved to Reading, um, my friend found out what had happened. So she went to him and she said, leave Mel alone don't touch her, don't go near her because I, I couldn't come back to my hometown because I was too scared to come back because of the trauma. Um, but she said, leave her alone. So I was quite fearful as well when I did move back because it was like, you know, just wanting to know if I'm going to bump into him, what's going to happen to me? Is he going to stay away from me? Like, you know, because like, I've told people what's happened. So yeah, that was a really scary time of... And he never got charged for anything. No, he did. I didn't. I didn't um, tell the police who he was. I didn't go down that road. I just—that was who I was at the time. I just didn't do that. Where did you grow up, Mel? So I grew up in Slough, um, same as Dwayne. I grew up in Slough, um, and I lived with mum, dad. Um, had my two, no, my older sister. And then my younger brother and then my younger sister. But around age, from when I remember when I was like four, my dad was an alcoholic. So I saw a lot of violence at home. Uh, my mum was beaten severely daily. Um, and that went on for years up until the, like I was 13. At one point when I was like, I'd probably say around 10, I would jump on my dad's back literally to attack him, to stop him from hitting my mum because it was just, and he used to beat us, um, the bell, you know. Um, and I loved my dad dearly, you know, but at the point, at the time, he was an alcoholic and, you know, he, he was just very violent, very angry. And I remember one time, actually, um, where my mum used to get beaten up all the time. My aunties were a bit about it. Um, so her two sisters, they're quite like heavy mob. And at one point, um, my mum was completely battered and they was like, that's it. They come around the house, they just battered him in the garden, like seriously just battered him. Good. Yeah. And like, um, yeah, so I saw a lot of all that growing up um, until I was like 13 and my mum decided then just to leave my dad and we moved away to Mel, Suffolk. Mel, how did you process that as a young person? You love this person, but he's battering your mum. How, how does the mind like try and grasp that? So... To me now, because I know about trauma, it was a lot of trauma um, because obviously working with kids and all the stuff I know now, I used to wee the beds at mm. a young age, you know what I mean? Because that's all the trauma that I was going through. And then I just decided then to just start going on destruction mode where I was, I think I was around 11 or even 10 when I was smoking. And then I would go and meet, you know, my friends and we'd go out drinking. I'd go home 
pissed and my dad would go mad and batter me and I'd just be so scared to even go home. And then he'd ground me, but then I'd be out again. I'd get out the window or something like that. You know, <laughs> just like, you ain't stopping me. And I just, yeah, that I, I was living in a lot of trauma, very fearful, worried. Um, and I think that's why a lot of my journey, I attracted a lot of, you know, men similar to my dad, like mm. abusive, um, angry, do drugs, drink. So life didn't change for you when you, your parents split up when you were 13? No, it got worse. Yeah. So, oh. so when, when we, when my mum split up, she then got with my stepdad, but I didn't see any really violence with my stepdad, but I didn't really get along with him, but it was the area for me as well. I just, it, it was weird because I grew up in a multicultural um, area. And then when I moved to Suffolk, there was not one black person. And it was just really weird for me. I had to make all new friends. And I, when I did make friends, my mate's mum was a drug dealer. So we used to nick the drugs. I was drinking, smoking, and just taking all kinds of drugs, going to meet people. I was took my first trip and I thought I was going to die. Is it like the walls were coming in on me? Like I was just literally just experimenting with anything because I just didn't really care. And I do believe that was because of my trauma. And I just thought, you know, I didn't care about anything. I'd just take anything and do anything. Not go to school. Tell my mum I'm not going to school. Just, just be so normal. When did you so stop normal. going to school? So um, 13. But I was it. I did go, but... Not really, you know what I mean? I'd bunk off mm. and, you know, go and meet my mates and we'd go smoking and drinking. <laughs> so that's what I would do. Was there anything in school that interested you before you bunked off? Not really. What no. did you envision yourself being when you left? So I wanted to be, um, you know, a receptionist, secretary or, or be in law. So when I went to college, I'd done my secondary diploma. So I did go to college. I did do that when I was six, um, 15, 16. But then that's when I left and moved back to Slough before anything else. But I always wanted to work in that kind of field. I even done a two week um, trial in um, a solicitors actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was, so I was trying, you know, it, I weren't all bad, but I just, I think it was because the drugs and, you know, the alcohol and just that lifestyle when I was young, I just, that's all I knew and that's, what I wanted to do, I suppose. So you moved back to Slough, then what happened? So before I moved back to Slough, actually, um, I was in the wrong crowd up in Suffolk and um, I started getting into really bad trouble. And my, I ended up moving out from my mum and stepdads and I moved in with my friend. And then she had an older boyfriend. He was from Liverpool and all his mates and that come down because it's kind of a little um, like seaside area. They come down to, to rob. Mm. So um, they robbed the um, sports shop. And I, I walked back into my mate's house. The whole house, like living room like this, was just full of sportswear. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And they was like, take whatever you want. So I took bags and bags and full of um, like sports clothes. Went back to my other mate. And then obviously we got raided. And I got caught by the police, got questioned. I only got a conditional discharge though. Um, so I couldn't get in trouble for a year and a fine, I think it was. And then my stepdad had enough of me. And I just thought, I don't even want to be here no more. I want to go back to Slough. So that's when I moved back to Slough. Um, moved in with my sister for a bit. Didn't get along. And then that's when I went into the supported home living. And then I had that experience with the sexual exploitation. So were yeah. you a different person after that? Because you had this trauma compounded by that experience? I'd say I started to not drink. Well, actually, I would used to drink, but not really do drugs anymore because I started having bad experiences with drugs. So it started um, making me more fearful to do the drugs anymore. So when after I came back from that experience, like with being raped and going all through that, I moved in with my sister and then um, I started working in a bar, in a pub um, down, um, yeah, just in her area. And I met some people, local people there. They were really nice. And I met, I met a friend. 
And I weren't really, I don't, like I said before, I don't really get on with my sister. So I thought, you know what? My friend said, why don't you come and live with me? And I said, okay. So I moved in with her. Everything was good. But then she used to sell a bit of this and a bit of that. And that's where I started getting into that field because I saw the money that she was making. We'd go out raving. We'd be popping pills. And we were doing all of this stuff. And... Yeah, it was just a bit crazy because I saw all the money that she was making and I thought, I can do that, you know? And I just thought, um, it's easy, yeah? And then after that, I was I moved out of there and then I moved in with another friend and then I was uh, hanging around a lot in Ealing because I got a job in Ealing behind another bar. So I was um, working in Ealing, um, didn't really do drugs then because I had a bad experience on it. Which one? Uh, when I, the ease, I had a really bad experience with my heart, with everything. I thought I literally was going to die. The feeling in my body was just like, I thought, this is it. How long after you took it did that happen? It happened about three or four hours after I took it. Three or four hours. So you had a normal experience Normal until experience point. until that point. And I literally, it really scared me. So I just thought, I started breaking away from all them kind of drugs. Um, and then... In the beginning, would you say that the E was getting rid of your trauma? You were feeling like happy and it was like self-medication? I think what it was when, if I go back a bit when I was in Suffolk and my mate used to steal drugs off her mum, she had um, this, so we used to take speed and go out to one of the under 18 um, clubs and it was, it was a really bad batch. So we used to have loads of it. So she didn't realize that her mum got a new batch and we took loads of it and I got off my, I was off my rocker. I, I was literally climbing up the walls. I couldn't sleep. I went home to my mum. I couldn't sleep for a whole month. A month. What? I had, I, uh, I, I slept, oh but like with like nightmares, oh like, and just like, it was just oh. awful. So I think that done a lot of damage to me. Um, and I, then I think, so then experiencing all the like drugs, like the ease and everything like that, when I was like in my like teens, late teens, I think it just done something to my body and I just couldn't deal with it. Cause yeah, I think it's, Sean's struggling to understand that, um, in the UK, yeah, especially, I mean, you're not that much older than me. No. But there was a time when the batches of ease that were coming out were killing people. Yeah, they were. Yeah. And we were eating them like no tomorrow, like they were Smarties. Mm. Literally like Smarties. So after the bad experience on the E, then, yeah. what happened in your life? So then I got a, a boyfriend, a partner, and because um, he knew a lot of people... It was really easy for me then because I wanted to do what my friend was doing because I thought this is easy money, you know. I, um, so he helped me and together we done selling, you know, white. And yeah, we just was partying, loving life, but it wasn't so great because there was a lot of domestic violence in our relationship. How long before that started after you met him? Um quite soon and how did that manifest just through um arguments insecurities jealousy fits of rage i think a lot of it stems from you know a lot of the violence that i saw i attracted my dad i think and i think i wasn't truly healed as well so i wasn't perfect in my relationships you know so i was also angry i was an angry child a lady teenager I was angry and I used to get jealous and just lash out and I would attack him so that went on for many years and I think like I stayed with him for quite a long time and we were doing what we were doing going on holidays but then I started um drifting off going on holidays with my mates drinking getting limousines and going here going everywhere um cheating on him with other with other guys I, it became our relationship came where I weren't even in love with him anymore didn't want to be with him but I would just still have him there and it was really bad when I look back at it now and think about it but I was just like probably using him you know I don't know like I just felt like I didn't want to get rid of him because I felt like it contributed to what we did 
But at the same time, I used to just go out, spend all the money, go out to Salone Street, buy the Gucci this, Fendi that, all the fast cars and performance cars, and just live in this lifestyle, but with all my friends. Do you see what I mean? We did have some good times, don't get me wrong, but I just think it was more I was living that single life. Living the life of Riley. Yeah, doing what I wanted, had all the money I wanted, didn't really care. So how did things end with him? So in the end, I think it come to a point where he knew that I was like being unfaithful. Then he went and was unfaithful and it just come to a point and it was an agreement in the end. It can't be no more. It's just, we just got to end it. So he went back to his mum's and then I carried on living in my home. The um, empire. Yeah. And then I moved to, uh, I, then what I did, I think I needed a break. So I moved to Marbella for six months, living the lifestyle, um, got my friends to, you know, sort everything out while I went there, send me money, whatever. And then um, came back and then I met Dwayne. <laughs> so I was living this lifestyle. I had all the money. I had all the people around me. I felt um, untouchable. Um, and yeah, I had good people around me. It, we had we had a good laugh, you know. It was it was there were some good points, but there was also some scary points because um, along my journey, it's like you're always looking over your shoulder, aren't you? So you are worried, you know, if anything's going to happen to you because well, I know right from wrong, and I knew what I shouldn't be doing. But yeah, I met Dwayne and then that was it. What were the scary moments then before Dwayne? So the scary moments were like people coming to, to my house to try and rob me. So well, be let's go over this a bit more slowly then. How many years were you in, involved in the business before you met Dwayne? So I'd say... Hold on. Ten. Ten no, years. Now hold on. How long was you with my man? Yeah, about eight, about nine years. All yeah, right, so there's a lot of ground. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of ground we've not covered there. I, Let's think about this year by year now. Okay. So, did you say you started in the business when you were still a teenager? Yes, yeah, so I was in my teens. Right, let's go back to that so year. I say I was in my 20s. Yeah, early 20s. Early yeah. 20s. Let's go back to that year. You're carefree, you're a teenager, you yeah. found the way to make money. Yeah. Was it kind of like innocent in that first year before it, it got very, really big? Yeah, it was really innocent at yeah. first, you know. Moved in with his mum and dad in the end. Um, that was awful. His dad was a nutter. Um, he used to beat his mum daily. So I saw a lot of violence there as well. So that's why I know he's obviously, I've attracted my dad, but then he's seen it as well. So then um, we moved out of there and moved in with my dad for a bit. And then his dad used to come around and start because he had like full control over my partner at the time. And um, so, yeah, there were some really horrible moments there. So a lot why of would he come dad? over? Yeah, why would he come over to your dad's Just to house? start on... Because he worked for him. Because he used to he work for him. He for him. They had a company. They had a company Skip together. Skip company. Skip so company. He had so stronghold on him because he worked for him. He ABC. worked for the company. Um, so he used to drive skips and stuff like that. So he worked for his dad. But obviously I used to just do what I was doing and um, he found out about it How? through people and um, probably he weren't he, happy. He likes a whistle, so he probably... <laughs> 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 so he weren't happy. Yeah. So then like, you know, there was arguments there and we just moved out, but we just still carried on doing what he was doing. I don't know if he carried on working there or if he got another job. Like, I, I do forget things. And I know that is part of trauma as well. You actually forget a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. like for your timeline. I, I have things from my 20s that I, I can only just remember now just yeah. slightly. Mm -hmm. I forgot for years. It, like, it is back part up, of trauma because like, oh. I looked that up because you forget things. You don't remember things. And I don't know that's part of like just completely blanking it out. But I yeah, mean, so I trauma, can't remember. Drugs and alcohol as yeah. well combined. Combined. Was, yeah. Doesn't help. <laughs> no, lesson. So, yeah, so then my nan moved to Birmingham because she wasn't very well. Like she was old and her, um, my aunties wanted to look after her. So she had a three bedroom house. So then we moved into the three bedroom house and then I looked after my um, 
sister because my mum had a brain hemorrhage mm. and she nearly died because um, she was still up there with my stepdad and my sister was up there with her, my little baby sister. And my mum had, had a brain hemorrhage and went into hospital and that's when my sister came down and lived in back in Slough and my mum there was a 50 50 chance that she was going to survive she was in a coma for about a week after the operation and they said they were not sure if she you know awake up so you know we played all the music to her and done all the things but she did wake up but she had to like teach herself we had to teach her to walk talk and everything again from scratch but my mum just weren't the same mum anymore you know it was just, it was really, really sad because the mum I knew wasn't the mum I know now. But I love her to bits, you know, I love my mum, but yeah, she's just not the, the mum I know. So was that added trauma? Yeah, I would say it was. And you were living up in Birmingham when this happened? No, my nan moved to Birmingham and I moved in my nan's house in Slough. Oh. So we were still in Slough and I moved in there with my partner and then we took on my little sister. And when things like that, more new traumatic things were happening, were you self-medicating with alcohol and drugs? So I think my my thing was more just alcohol. Yeah. Because the drugs, I had too many bad experiences on it. It just, it wasn't the way forward for but it me. It weren't more like alcohol. It was more like you'd party. Yeah. Without raping. Mm. You wouldn't drink throughout the week. You'd no, be money. She's addicted week, to money. I, I, I Working. What it was, them. I was more... Addicted to making money, nice clothes. I always look glamorous. I love that lifestyle of going out at the weekend or with your new, your new clothes on. Do you know what I mean? Partying. That was my thing with all the girls. Do you know what I mean? So I don't think, even though all the bad experiences have happened, I was never one to even really drink unless I was actually going out. I wouldn't be one of the ones to have a bottle of wine every night. I wouldn't do it like my mates would, but I don't know. It weren't me. And how are you finding balance in life between your partying and looking after your mum? So I didn't actually look after my mum. My dad and my stepdad continued to look after my mum. But then when he passed away, she moved down to Slough and then we all contributed. So it was my nan, my aunties, everyone, we all looked after her. What else happened yeah. in your teenage years that we've not spoke about? Um trying to think so oh there was a time actually when I was 13 I got with a boyfriend he was Scottish and um there was violence in that relationship as well it's just every relationship was violence so this was really I, I felt I was going to die I, I literally we were in the kitchen and we were having an argument and he got me and he slammed me on the floor but my you know when the tiles are really really like proper tiles you heard the crack <sighs> and i heard the crack but then i must have like unconscious for like i don't know if, how long it was but it seemed quite a long time and i woke up and to me i thought oh my god i'm gonna die but um so that was a real bad experience that I experienced with him and then he and through our relationship he was just not you know nice we didn't get along that well and like even he would give me like if I said I had a headache he'd give me tablets but there'd be sleeping tablets and then I would just go to sleep so I don't even know what would happen after that it was just not a good relationship at all how long were you with him for um I'd say a, about a year that's, yeah that's a long time yeah and how soon into the relationship did the violence start? That was pretty much straight, straight away. Off. Yeah. How did you get out of it? So I just think we just split up. I, d I don't know. I think I just told my mum. I, yeah, my mum helped. And I think I just got away from him and just said I can't be with him anymore. Yeah, it was just... So you turned 20. What's your life like in your tw uh, 20? In my 20s, just partying. Literally loving life literally in london or slough so both so in because i i was in in my 20s actually before i before i was um doing the, that lifestyle i was working in Ealing, so i was working in the bar in Ealing, and there used to be a lot of footballers used to come up and i used to be in the vip area and i'd be giving out the champagne they'd give me tips of 200 pound you know and i used to just be with my mates going out clubbing to coliseum all of these places and just raving really 
Um, and I used to get like my, my friend, she um, got with boyfriends in Shepherd's Bush. And I saw a lot of the lifestyle of like being pulled over and searched because obviously they used to sell drugs and live that lifestyle because they were kind of gang members. But I didn't really get involved with them. It was when I moved back to Slough and then um, I started um, seeing what my friend was doing and got my new partner that I started to... How did you get journey. clients for that? That The clients were mainly firstly from him. So he knew a lot of people. So they would come through him. But then I just got really known and everyone knew Mel. So you made a name for yourself. How much were you earning? So, <laughs> so sometimes I was earning, I'd say, 5K a week um, to start with. Or it could be a grand... A, a day. Is he still in your 20s? Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of money for your 20s, yeah. man. Yeah, it was a lot. Um, we were around, we were just um, had so many people and we were just doing so much and just loving life. Yeah. What and did you burn through it? Yeah. Spunked it. We just spunk it on whatever, you know, buying things and going out and going on holidays. You just don't, you don't think, do you, at the time? You just, I just didn't have that mindset, I suppose. I just was just give everyone everything. Didn't anyone target you for robbery? Um, I think it was more when I stopped being with him, it was more robbery. How old were you then? So I was around 27-ish. Did anything major happen? Early so, 20s? Early 20s, no, I can't, I don't, I don't really think nothing major happened. It was like, I felt really untouchable. It's like, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's because I was well known in the area. People respected me. Um, I was very like caring, help anyone, give anyone a pound, you know, <laughs> give people like at the shops 50 pounds here and there, like just help anyone. What if someone owed you money and they didn't pay? Should just leave it. What? Do you think? Yeah. No, there was times what, that what I, mean? wouldn't, I wouldn't oh, leave big bit, it. Big bits. If people yeah, big bits owed me money, money yeah, yeah. they would. Uh, they'd I'd, pay up. They'd yeah. pay up. I don't think there would be no one that wouldn't really pay me up. Yeah. If it was like the odd people that are a bit thingy, I'd just say, "Oh, don't worry about it." Do you see what I mean? Was but, there ever a yeah. situation that you had to put pressure on someone? No. What if they owed you a big amount? How would you deal with that? I'd just have to get someone to do it, but no one did. Do you see what I mean? And I think it was the. I don't know. It was the people that I was around had respect for me as well. And I just think that it just nothing it like was that really. Times, times were different Different then. back then, I think. Do you understand? So there was only a certain elite people that would be on things. Now it's a fashion, it's liquidated. Yeah? It's, but yeah. there was an elite people. So then Mel was one of the elite people that people respected. And everyone used so to get strange. their bits and pieces anyway. So it was like, it was it was more close. Yeah. Everyone knew everyone. It wasn't like how things are now, was it? Yeah, and I'm not trying to glamorise drug dealing, but yeah. it sounds like you had a really easy time. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, there's times where I've got pulled over by the police. What um, was the first one? So, I think when I was going to wash my car, it was just when we were going to go out for my birthday, I got called over by the police. And like my heart was pounding. And Why? I was thinking, because I had, I had, things on me and I was thinking, oh my God, this is it. Did you, you have know? a lot on you? Not a lot at this time, but it was still something. And I was thinking, oh my God, I'm going out for my birthday. This is all I need. But um, they pulled me over, um, just spoke to me and didn't really bother searching or anything. So I was just, I was the lucky, but then um, I think it was when Dwayne went to prison. So this is the, I'm, I'm talking, this is the most, terrifying time that I had experience that I had was when Dwayne was in prison and I moved out to Hamel Hampstead and I bought a little cottage so we were living out in Hamel Hampstead and it was out the way it was really nice the guy used to come and meet me and drop off my really big parcels and then um me and my mate um I think I had a hired car at the time and it had a roof off I don't know what one it was and um anyway we were going back to Slough because we were going out for the night but I needed to take the thing with me so I said put it in your bag let's go so went on our way driving through Hamel Hampstead then we get pulled over because I'm on the phone and I I'm acting all because this is the thing I'm not thinking 
because I think I'm untouchable. So I'm on the phone like, yeah, 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 sun shining, roof down, all like music pumping. Police have drove past. And I'm like, shit. So I'm like, went to try and kind of lose them. And I thought, nah, that, that isn't going to happen. We're just going to have to pull over. So we pulled over. And my mate, like, she don't even believe in God, but she was, like, shitting herself and she was started praying. And so she, she was like, oh, my God, God, if you're there, like, she started praying. And I was just like, right, okay. And I was like, can you get out of the car? So I got out of the car because they didn't ask her. They asked me. So I got out of the car, went round, and they was like, what's your name? All the, you know, that kind of stuff. So I told them my name. And then they was just like, can you open the boot? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I opened the boot. And I was like, have you got anything in this car that you shouldn't have? And I was like, No. And I was like, okay. And then I was like, right, we're going to have to breathalyze you and then we're going to have to do a full search. And I was like, yeah, sure. He said, have you been drinking? I was like, no, no, no. So then obviously they got the breathalyzer out, um, breathalyze me, but then they got a call and they said, you're lucky, we've got to go. <sighs> and then they went. <sighs> my mate was like, oh my God, like I can't believe it because we would have like been like- That would have been your birthday ruined. Yeah. That would have been everything we heard. That would have been many birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, if she didn't believe in God, I'm sure she does now, but yeah. So I'm curious then, because you mentioned like a big amount in the car. How do you go from being a teenager who's just hooking up a few people to changing, to changing the, the, the direction? The Money. source, the source yeah. of it? So I think um, where I got well, quite well known and other people were moving bits, I thought, you know... I might as well go up and get bigger bits to give to them and it makes life easier. I haven't got to worry about the little things, less to deal with, you know, that kind of thing. So I got smarter. Um, so then obviously I started meeting people in different areas that live in London, um, Essex, and I met the right connections, got the right, the right stuff, you know, because, you know, some stuff can be really... Not that great. Were any foreign <laughs> mafias involved at this point? No foreign mafias, no. <laughs> but they were about it, you know. They, you know, they they were like gangster. They had. Um... When you go and meet these people for the first time, then how do you handle yourself in that situation? I just be me. Were you a bit cocky? No, yeah. I, I I just no. be me. But I don't know what it is. I just had that something about me that people liked, and I and and trust do you see what i mean i had that trust and that connection with that they just want to work with me to set that so, up with somebody already vouched for you i think it's not even people vouching for me like i would meet these people i met some people in marbella as well just randomly meet them and not known them before but they would have that level of trust for me and yeah honestly the amount of drug you know dealers we've had on here and they've all got like Fear people have either been fearful of them yeah. or well that's the only thing fearful of them yeah. you, you've actually done it through kindness yeah mm. <laughs> you're a drug dealer sorry a drug dealer <laughs> through kindness it's trust just as well. trust, and yeah. I think it's kindness and people and trust, like you and people like me I was very likeable I don't know that's why I how I got where I, I did I think because I was just so likeable obviously I had a like a like a crazy squeak streak to me do you know what i mean mm. but that's through my trauma and that was that a driving force of my you, behavior <laughs> but it would only come out in, yeah with men did you have to demonstrate that from time to time to like show people what you're capable of I, I i think people knew that i just that i would wouldn't care i think they they know that like i would say how it is with certain things like even in times when my sister like her a boy was like really horrible to her around the shops. And they used to all hang around the shops and want to be gangsters. Used to all hang around there, you know, smoking, drinking. And she was really come back crying. I thought, I'm not having this. So I went around there and smacked one of them. So he hit me back. So I was like, right. So I went into the shop. It was the local shop. And the guy knows me anyway really well. I just started grabbing bottles to throw them and it was just got, got in a big commotion. So I will hold my own anyway. I won't not hold my own, so. So you mentioned then it was all smooth, but then yeah. when you guys broke up, yeah. people thought they could make their moves. Yeah. What happened then? So I was quite vulnerable anyway, I'd say, because obviously, you know, um, I didn't value myself as much. I had low self-esteem. There was all of that. So, you know, I let people use me. I was looking for 
that love, that dad dad figure, you know, daddy issues. I had all of that anyway. So I think I become more vulnerable then as well, even though I was vulnerable even in my relationship with him because I used to be partying and sleeping with guys and doing whatever because I didn't respect myself anyway because I didn't know who I was. So I think um, I become quite vulnerable there. So then they all used to come then, you know, to want money or whatever it may be. So I used to just have to look after everyone just so I'm safe because I don't know what might happen because this is when it started to get a little bit sticky. And then, so then I ended up moving um, to Marbella for like six months and I left my line left with everyone else just to deal with. And then they were just sending me money as and when needed. And I just was just there for six months because I thought I just needed that break. I just feel like a lot of stuff was coming on top, to be honest. But anyway, I met like a lot of people out there um, I even uh, met the Only Way is Essex girls before they was the Only Way is Essex. Um, so I knew a lot of, you know, people. Did they like a bit of the naughty chalk? Yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah, all these girls did, I think, at that age. Um, but yeah, so... Did you meet any watch thieves out there? Yeah, so I, what? there was a lot of like um, Russian girls and other girls that used to go out and party. They're very, very beautiful. But then what they used to do is link up with the guys out there, go back to their place when they're really slaughtered, steal their watches and whatever it is, and then and then gone. Yeah, so it's it's crazy out there, honestly. Did you meet got, make connections out there? Did you say? So yeah, I made a lot of connections out there. Some, met some really good people some really high up people, um, which we done some work with when we moved back, when I moved back to Slough, I'd go up to Essex, meet them, so yeah. How did you test the purity when you're doing deals with new people, new suppliers? So I knew the good stuff. I could see the good stuff, I knew. I, I don't know, I had an eye for it as well. You can see when it's got loads of like benzocaine and everything in it and you know when it's the pearl and it's the real stuff and the layers are there. So I knew my shit. So, and I would just be able to get someone to test it as well, to know. So yeah. So you had no supply issues then? You had no. quality control? I had, I, I think that's why I was so good, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh. So, all right, so you're, you're moving up the food chain still. You're in, what, about your mid-20s now? Yeah. You still, it's still, the business is still growing by mid-20s, yep. is it? Yeah. How many people have you got you working for you at this point? So, I used to have a couple of girls doing it with me. Um, you know, I didn't... I kept it safer. Yeah. Um, just moving things around, doing what we did. So, did you insulate yourself whereby people would get it from those girls, they wouldn't get it from you? Well, I would just um, always be involved. I don't know. I felt like I was addicted to that lifestyle. I just didn't know anything else. So I felt like I just had to be involved some way, in shape or form. What you mean and purpose. Yeah, I think it did. She said, I've got to go work. I, I just, that was You're a character, aren't you now, in the scene, yeah. in the underworld? Yeah, yeah, and I think it was, I was really addicted to it. And same I just here. Felt I, I had really exactly the same. untouchable and I just loved it. I love the, I, I almost got like a rush from it. I don't know what it was. I used to just love being out, meeting people, my phone ringing and just be out and about. I just, I couldn't stay st static. I was not one of them ones to be like still. I just had to be out and about. Did you never get paranoid? L yeah, yeah, there was times. Yeah. Was what was say. the first time? I think it's more um, when the police are like driving up behind you and stuff like that. And you just, my heart goes into my mouth and I just think, oh my God, relax, you know, be calm. Um, and I think I've been paranoid times where that's why I got a camera at my house because I had times where people were coming to my house. So I started to get a bit worried because people, I'm, what do you mean by that? People, I don't know who they were. Randoms. Random people wanting to come and, and rob Bye. me. And rob you? Mm. And how did you know that they were coming to rob you? Well, I think everyone knew what I was doing in my estate. So I think they're not going to come for anything other than that. Did they so, try and get in? So there's times where they've tried to get in and um, I've seen them on the camera. What did you do? So I'd ring the police because I never used to keep nothing in my house. So <laughs> I used to think the police would come to my house because there's nothing there. I'm not letting them come in and <laughs> harm me. Do you know what I mean? And did that work? So, 
that, did that work? The police wouldn't. Um, I don't know if they'd turn up, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. But no, they would go away anyway. Because I think, what We're is it? Busy one dealing, time, dealing, busy one time, <laughs> actually, it was one time when my, when my niece, uh, not my niece, my cousin was there. And it happened. And then she'd shout out, we're calling the police or we'll say something. And then they would run. Do you know what I mean? So we'd give them the heads up. So I don't know if actually we call the police and actually come out, but like I've had to call the police a few times when I've gone out. To, this is in broad daylight. I've gone out and I've um, gone to the hairdressers. I've come back and they've like booted off my door. Thank you for watching the podcast. Here's a word from our sponsor, Rocket Money. Don't you hate it when you've got subscriptions out there that you don't know about? Taking all that cash out of your account. I recently found out I had four Amazon Prime subscriptions. Now I've got it down to one. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Most people think they're spending $80 on their subscriptions, when in reality the number is closer to $200. When you're signed up for so many things like streaming services you used to watch one show or free trials for delivery you don't use, it's so easy to lose track of what you're paying for. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com forward slash Sean, S-H-A-U-N. That's rocketmoney.com, S-H-A-U-N, rocketmoney.com slash Sean. Thanks for supporting our sponsor. Link is in the description box on YouTube. Back to the podcast. Um, and they robbed like a, you know, the little mini motorbikes back then. Mini motors. Um, yeah. yeah, them ones. And uh, I had some money, some cash. So they've obviously robbed the cash and other like jewelry, little bits and bobs from my house. So because you said you never used to keep it at the house, where yeah. was it? So I used to keep it somewhere else. What, like a separate flat? Yeah, somewhere completely different in someone else's place. So no one knew where it was. So I just, yeah, to keep myself safe. And to keep yourself safe, how many people did you tell about the other building? It would just be like my close friends. So it'd just be people that I trusted. So, yeah. And I'd move it around a lot. Actually, there was one time, actually, I did get robbed. I actually did, but it wasn't a lot. I think it was only like a, like something really small, like an O or couple of O's. And that was when I left it at some girls and then they went there and she obviously give it up or whatever but I wasn't really fussed about it too much because it's nothing do you know what I mean but it was just yeah so there was a time but nothing really come of it to be honest and was that one an inside job would you say yeah yeah did you yeah. find out who it was yeah I know who it was yeah a hundred percent you just let it slide I let it slide because I just want to keep them you know, it's sweet. Sometimes you have to, otherwise it's going to turn sour. And I know moving forward, Dwayne had a lot of issues with them as well, didn't you? What? So I just know that that's why I just wanted to keep it sweet. This before I even got with Dwayne. So, yeah. When the place you lived at got robbed. Yeah. How did that feel, like trying to get to sleep the next day? Well, that was horrible because it was like everyone had gone through my personal stuff. And it's like knowing what they've gone through, you know, like all my drawers out, everything. So they've, in they've invaded my personal space. So that was awful. And then that's when I did get the camera because then I didn't feel safe. And did you up the security in any other ways? Mm. Not really. I just think it was just more the camera and just being a bit more aware. Yeah. And did you know who'd done that robbery as well? No. 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 I don't know who'd done that. Was that the biggest one? Yeah. I've not really had anyone rob me. Since then, it, it didn't happen after that one? No. Mm. I had Actually, I had someone come and steal my car. So, yeah. So, it was... Dwayne's, um, shall I say, older. No, well, he wasn't older. Basically, when he, I was a kid. When he was a kid, he tried to groom Dwayne. No, basically, you might as well go back to when Thingy then, because basically what happened, he was in... Before when I'm she with was, you. When she was, before she was with me, she was in the house, her house. You got this guy there. No, yeah. actually, I was with you. No, you weren't. You was with Nathan. You was in the house and he's counting all his money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he before I was with Mel, we were at Mel's house. 
yeah a couple of us like yeah. and then there's matey boy there and he's counting his matter like he's got a few grand there whatever giving it all the large and all that but he's the same guy that groomed me when i was a kid yeah when i was 13 he was 23 taking me and slapping me up and doing all that stuff and now he's counting his dough at her house because he, yeah, he was with friends with my um fella fella at the time and then he's counting the dough and i'm thinking that's a bit of me that is and he must have felt the vibration so he's wrapped it up and he's gone mel look after that because she he knows mel's good for it and got dough he's gone mel look after that dashed it in thin air i've and grabbed i'm the, like over the other side of the lounge i've grabbed it and then i've gone upstairs in the bathroom i've gone upstairs i put it down my trousers the big branch down there and, and i was I've, telling him get down and give it now and then i've just walked i've walked down and walked out and i said any man i didn't even have nothing with me but i had my thing down any man wants it follow me outside but no one followed me out and then obviously i called my transport and thingied off so that same guy yeah this is when i weren't with mel so then later on so he tried to then put it on me to say oh, I've got to give the money. Because he knew, obviously. Because he thinks I'm good for it and I'm just going to do it. But I was like, nah, 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 that ain't happening. I am not paying the money. So it went then, on for a while. Then where, he's got people calling up my so phone. It went on for a while saying, he, he, like, you know, pay the money, whatever, but it never got paid. Then he's jumping on my phone with a little younger saying, oh, my money, money. I said, listen, bro. I said, your money's in a safety deposit box and I swallowed the key. So you have to come and get it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I was tapped at the time. Are you with me? Yeah. <laughs> So, so does that just fizzle out? No, because then that's that, later on when he come through the house and took so the keys, fizzled, but I was in prison. So it fizzled out for a little bit though, because um, I wasn't with you. This happened yeah, when I was he with weren't you. With so this fizzled out, it did. Yeah, 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 yeah. it fizzled out. So it fizzled out, yeah. out, didn't pay him, whatever, it fizzled out. And then, um, then when I got with Duane, so obviously I went to Marbella, come back from Marbella. I wasn't with my partner no more. And then Dwayne came on no, the scene. No, but before I come on the scene, you said people were on you. The oh, pressure, yeah, yeah, the were pressure. Coming. So yeah, so that's why, I'm, that's why I moved to Marbella for a yeah. bit because if I was on the pressure, you know, obviously my house got robbed. Um, I weren't with my ex-partner anymore. Um, I could just feel things, you know. I was just going out partying, people were using, abusing, and I just thought I'd need to get away. So this is when I moved um, to Marbella for a bit. And then when I came back, um, Dwayne then come on the scene. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. So you moved back and everything was still as everything it was. Everything as, as it was. Yeah. You said people were on you. When you came back from Marbella, everyone wanted. Yeah. So I had like, you know, the younger lot always coming around wanting money or wanting this. So she was on to top basically. And then when I come in. And yeah. And all of that. And then I used to have parties around my house. I was just like literally slipping. And then I come if in and shut I mean. it down. And then, um, yeah, then Dwayne come along. And let's re <clears throat> recap on the day you met. Yeah, so how was that? So it was just really random because I, like, the thing is, Dwayne and I have known each other for quite a while, but we've never even looked at each other like Aren't that, we? have we? <laughs> <laughs> when I want sad, can I get it, girl? <laughs> well, I just didn't, like, acknowledge all that. Do you know what I mean? I was in my own little world doing my thing, like, and then obviously when I came back from Marbella, Dwayne come knocking at the door with his mate. And I let him in. I was like, oh, how you doing? And he's like, yeah, how are you, man? And I was just like, yeah, cool. And then I think I was going somewhere, weren't I? And then I said, do you want to lift? Because I'm going somewhere. I dropped you off, whatever. And then you took my number. And then I think we went. We had a little drink or something. Had a little drink together. And then, and, then, and then from there, he, he used to ring me and say, do you want to come out? And I, he said, what are you up to? And I said, I'm going out. Do you want to come? And he's like, yeah. So then we used to go out, you know, partying, whatever, wasn't it? At yeah. weekends and, and it stuff. Went. Was it and love then, at first sight? Huh? When it happened, it happened. Yeah, it, it did. When that it happened, it. it happened. Like, boom, it I got my stuff. Like, I moved in. and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what night was that then? Well, when oh. it happened? Yeah. Was there a... No, it was a few... It was a, It was about... Um, a couple of months... I was, I was just in there. I was coming. Yeah. I was. I was... And then it in just went out. on, yeah, we, weeks were coming, but in I was on it, then we'd go out, out and then it happened one yeah. night and then we we, 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 Got together. we hit it off. Yeah. What happened that night that brought you together like that? 
I know it was building up, but yeah. what was the catalyst? I don't know. I think um, we. Bo- I think we both me- met each other's needs. To be mm. totally honest yeah. with you, because yeah. I was about it. I went. I was about it. She yeah. had pressure from the locals, mm. and not pressure like that, but, but psychological psychological pressure where there was pressure there from the the young the young boys. Yeah. The, they're they're on it. I was a bit. I had gone around with people that are in their fifties now, so even though I was, I was twenty three at the time. I was moving around with people that were thirty three. So like yeah. I'm thirty eight now. They were they're like fifty. So I was always a bit advanced. These yeah. boys that are on the scene now, were my age or a little bit younger. Yeah. But I was more advanced and a bit about it. So when they was in school, I was on I was out on the roads. I was mm. making money from day one. So <laughs> these boys were coming in, and then I've kind of come in on the scene, and just. Almost like a protective. Mode. Yeah, I come over because then I will grab Mel. We'll be out in a club and they're trying it, and then I will grab her. So I kind of took possession of Mel, didn't I? Yeah, it was like from a protection what, it was mode. like a protection. protection. But everyone thought it was a, um that everyone I come thought to destroy he was and using take. me um mm. to get my the money things. and stuff like that. Because his reputation. Because his reputation. Mm. But it sounds like he came in at the right time. Time. Yeah. yeah. Because I don't know what would have happened after that. And that's that. when they were coming to the house with the... Because I the, think... With the sawn offs and stuff I like that. I think it was about time where I could have went down a road... It could have been a two-way thing where something serious could have happened to me or prison or whatever it, it was. I think it was coming to that... At that point. Dwayne just said someone showed up with a saw enough. What happened on that night? Yeah, because all these people here now, they're hating because I've come in, yeah? No one really liked me anyway because I used to have it with the people thingy. So they're everyone jumping on the bandwagon. Mm. So when I've come in, they're like, what? Dwayne's coming and with Mel. So then they're still trying to steal my energy. You got some young bucks and that trying to charge me for green, some green. I said, you nuts. I said, I'm an OG, bro. I'll start burning notes in front of him. <laughs> <And then, laughs> This is the sort of stuff no, this, he used to do, this, this seriously. Was, this was my mindset. Do you understand? I started burning notes. Are you nuts? I'm like, oh, you can't charge me for that. And then they come through the door with a dotty. And that's when I walked out of the house into the field saying, what? A, B, and C. So they were trying to steal my energy because they know, they're thinking, what? They didn't want this to happen. Whether it was them, the girls, even her cling-alongs that were in the car yeah, with her that were making, want- making big dough, they didn't like it yeah. because I've come on the scene now. And I'm shutting things down. People that are taking liberties, people are taking advantage. I'm shutting it down. I'm bringing the truth on the scene. So then what's happening? Yeah. They're not liking it. Yeah. Even the girl, the girl, her friend, her bona fide friend, brought a man down from Birmingham. Yeah. He wants a bit of work, like to, to a bit of work to, to rob some people. So I said, all right, I'll get a car. I'll get two soldiers to go with you. What do you need? All right, boom. Right, do you want, do you want some work? Boom, 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 boom. Yep, all right. They got a car. I got two heads. Sweet. Bam. Drop him off. He jumps in the car. I leave him to it. Later on that night, we're in bed. I'm thinking, right, oh, my man, they ain't call, they ain't called me. What, where are they? What happened to them? I said, I jump on the phone. I said, excuse me, what's happening, bro? Where are? You? Oh yeah, yeah. It was, it was good. It was all good. Right, right. I said, what do you mean it was all good? So where's my bringings, bro? Where's, where's, what, what did you hit? What did you lick? Oh, boom, boom. so I've jumped on, chucked my tracksuit on. I've gone to meet them and they said, yeah, yeah. I said, well, bring me in then. So they brought me in some dough. And he said to me, oh, my man, the Brom Brom guy has said, when we said we were driving back from the job and it was a naughty bit of work as well. He goes, ah, oh. he goes, what are we going to give D? He's like, fuck D blood, rah, rah, rah. He can, he knows that I'm flossing doing my thing. He's probably heard from his missus that no one liked me anyway. My line's dinging. All we hear all day is my line. I'm back and forward. Mel's smashing it, doing her thing. He said to my people, oh, fuck thee, blood. He's making money, rah, rah, rah. I said, yeah. All right. He, I've linked him up with my people. This is the front of people. It makes it sick. So then I've gone back to the house. I said, Mel. A, B, and C have got to get evicted from the big brother house. They can no, no longer be here. I've gone in the bedroom. I've sat down on the bed. I said, what's happening, brother? I said, what, what happened? Oh, blood. I said, listen, keep it, mate. Keep it. You're evicted now. They bit their self in the foot. So these are the type of people that Mel had around her. So then from that, this person that she had in the passenger seat the full time, she was gone. So now... All the people that taking a piss, taking advantage, they're all going. I'm bringing truth on the scene. So now, 
it's Bonnie and Clyde. And that's yeah. how went, things went down, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then it never stopped from there even, did it? No. I understand, like, you cleared the deck, but sometimes when you clear the deck, it, they can go away thinking, right, I'm going to do something about this. Yeah. Did anyone try anything? So that's when I think... Um, Passive aggressive or anything, like, especially if you've been close with people. Yeah. So... No, no, none of none of my girlfriends mm. did. They just, um, yeah, they just moved on, didn't they? Yeah, they moved on. Peacefully, they all peacefully yeah, yeah. moved on. Cause, yeah, cause, they cause just I went, moved I on. Right. I, think, I, think, <laughs> I think they were more worried, like, what he would do. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. I weren't right. No, <laughs> you weren't. You weren't right. You turned my world upside down for a while. <laughs> for a reason. Just so glad that you, like, you know, we're here today to tell the story. Yeah. Like, that's the amazing the thing. story. Mm. So then that would happen. Then that, we'd think, be at it, wouldn't we? Yeah, you were saying in Dwayne's interview so, about how volatile your relationship would be sometimes. Yeah, so, yeah, we got together, you know, party and all of that. He moved people out and whatever. Then I started getting armed police coming through my house. So the first time that happened, what was the situation? Where were you? I was out at the time. My sister was in and armed police come through the house. Just smashed the door in. Yeah, looking for looking for him. And you'd be in the car driving sometimes in their skid there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was the first time. Yeah. Sister was in the house. What was the second time? So then there's been a time where I've had to. Was it when they chased us? Where? Weren't you in the when car I was in when the they car. were looking for me? Yeah. Because even the criminals were picking up the phone and calling police and telling them I got straps and stuff to get me off the streets because they they, yeah. they, they, they they there was fear because I was that much of yeah thingy i'd have i'd walk out of this firm's house yeah and they're all in there playing snooker drinking smoking sniffing poker and i've come out and i slipped on the ice they started laughing i've gone back in there with a the strap i pulled the strap out and i've gone whack and they're all running and i whacked the same guy that the, the groomed and exploited me i grabbed him and the thing is i've gone back in there so because people people are doing things not blatantly yeah it's all indirect. I was a man, if I'm gonna rob yeah. a man, I'll do it balaclava. I'm just real as, as the cause. So there's a lot of people doing things behind my back and probably when I'm yeah. in jail, the, the young one's trying to jump on Mel and stuff like, cause we weren't married then and we, that's the nature of the thing. So when I'm coming out of jail and they're hearing that I've got a strap and this young sweet, sweet boy thinks he's a gangster thing, their mums are jumping on the phone, Dwayne's got a gun, rah, rah, rah. So then I've got armed police, I'm going into a hotel, armed police. <laughs> smashing the windows, dragging me out of the car because they want me off the streets. The people that are selling the drugs and the people, the criminals as well, they're just yeah. picking up the phone and calling the police. Yeah. Would you say you was a tax man then? Not to that extent. If I wanted something, there was times where I'll go to people's houses and I'd, I'd, I'd say, listen, because yeah, I was obviously high on drugs and I'll go there, nice and early doors, and I'll sit down and I'll say, they're smoking a spliff, so, broad daylight, I ain't been asleep for three, four days. And I say, listen, bruv, yeah? I want this amount of dough by this time or else I'm doing blood sports. Simple. And <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's what it was. It was just... So then people are jumping on the phone. I'll be on the off license sitting on the counter and then a firm come in and I could smell them. Even though I'm high and slept, I can smell them. But yeah, so this firm's come in, yeah? My Irish firm, I know, I know the firm, they've come in and I'm sitting on the counter, but I'm ride or die. So I've got a borer down my thing. I'm sitting on the counter in the off license waiting for two o'clock for the money to turn up. This firm's turned up. So I'm there on the counter and I said, I can smell your son, yeah? And I could smell it. I could, I could smell who the one that was coming to do the work and I knew the one that was there to go, do you know what I mean? But I was game. So I got the borer down my thing. I've jumped off to go with them. Do you remember just like jumping in the back of the car? I jumped off the counter to go with them, walked out, there's the other firm there. Are you Dwayne? I said, what are you talking about? Yeah, I got nicked. Yeah, I bounced my blower off the floor. Whether it's divine intervention, because things would have got bloody or not, but <laughs> I'm here today. But that's the nature of it. They wanted me off of the streets, off of the estate, away from Mel. And when I was away from Mel, they will come in to target Mel, but divine intervention, we're here today because- Yeah, and I think there was a lot of divine intervention to, to be totally <laughs> honest, because I don't know what it was. I think God wanted us together, I think. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And that's why it was just, it's just crazy when you look back at it. And there was another You time. can't comprehend like- Because me and Mel were at it and I'm going in, we're having domestic violence. She's biting me nose, Lily taking me nose off. I'm doing stuff this yeah. down up to her. I swear this, I don't know if because I was up for a few days, but basically 
my guys goes, yeah, come to Windsor, rah, rah, rah. And I'm in the car and I said, yeah, it's like I've heard him say, yeah, I've got him at A, B and C. And we're driving and I've got a big bore down my side there as well. And it's like, it's, it's not even summertime, so it's light still. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, he's trying to set me up. Because I know people are trying to put money out on my head. I'm thinking he's trying to set me up. And then anyway, I was umming and ahhing, show I go in there, show I not. And then I thought, yeah, fuck, because I'm all or nothing. So I thought, fuck it, I'll go and mask up the tool around the corner. I've masked it up in the bush. And then I thought, fuck it, I've just gone in there. And then I've gone in there. And I said to my man, there's the firm there. And I've said to him, the one that took me there, I said, listen, bruv, yeah? If anything happens to me, you're going. Simple. Yeah, and that's what I told him. Nothing happened that night. There was nothing directly because some people beat around the bush, don't they? They don't yeah. direct. It's all, it's all psychologically. Yeah, so I'm there and we're at the table and all that, but no one's saying anything specifically, but I'm saying to them, I know what this is about. It's either A or B. Yeah, and then I'll speak to them and say A, B and C, but I was about it anyway. I walked out of there anyway. The, 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 the night went, I didn't get hurt. So my, my man didn't get hurt because he would have got hurt. If I never got body, he would have got hurt. Simple. So how would you describe yourself then? If Mel was a kingpin of white, what, you're not a gang member, you're a lone wolf, you're yeah. not a tax man. What, what are you? How would you describe you in one word? One man band. Yeah, I, a real G. <laughs> I'd say, I'd say. You're I'd, a gang member, but. No, not... I weren't a gang member. I weren't a gang member. I was a lone yeah. soldier. Yeah. I've yeah. always been, just real, just real lone soldier. I wasn't a real G. Like, a lone I soldier. I put a G in the gang. I weren't that person to, yeah. to be in a gang or jump on the phone to someone yeah. and say, oh, mm. he's troubling me. Ra, ra, ra. I would go out, whether there's five, yeah. ten people and they yeah. got straps, I would just go into it. Yeah. Can I ask what the circumstances were surrounding you trying to bite his nose off? Yeah. Go on. So, you know, when me and Dwayne got together, there was a lot of insecurities and jealousy and stuff like that. And then we must have been in a house at the time. But we've had violence since then. So when I know when Dwayne's on high. high, yeah, I have to still also protect myself as well. So I'll do whatever I can to survive. Do you see what I mean? So there was a point where I just felt like I had to do something to him <laughs> and then get out of the situation. Set the table was, then. What, yeah, did you what, hold him down? And what, so What built up to this? What built up to that, Dwayne? So we were in, we were oh, in yeah. there, we were just in the house and I think that an argument might have struck out. And With me I just and someone thought, else? No, I or think for me and you, I think. Over the white smoking. Yep. And then I just thought, I'm getting out of here, but I'm going to have to do something. So, like, but how did it happen? Oh, I don't know whether we're thinking, remember. but I've just literally got on him, yeah, and bit his nose so thin that I felt it the flesh. It's it still was cut literally now. hanging, if you can see yeah. there, because it was hanging. And I literally just bit the flesh. And I had stilettos on. She could yeah? run fast in stilettos. And I can run. Trust me. But I literally bolted it out that door because I know he's gonna he's gonna come for me now. Do you know what I mean? And then I just ran so fast and I got away. Did you get away? Yeah, because I, I went round and I got away because okay. I took my shoes off. I don't know, you didn't get me. No, but you usually faster than you. <laughs> you didn't get me. But there's but, another time, but Mel, what she won't do, if I say to her, I right, go now. Yeah, she won't, won't go. go. So I was in the, we was in a pub place before go. and I knew it was going to kick off. I knew because we were at it and my man's giving it lemon. And I said, Mel, go please. I She's go. gone. And then it's kicked off. And then I'm wrapping my man up. I've got him in a headlock. She's coming round telling him to, telling me to let him go. Because I'm, then I'm I that kind of person, see? Then I've let go and he's dashing bottles and licking the bottle off her head. Off my head then. Because she's told so me to let, me I told now. her to go. I've let him. Now he's made me vulnerable. So he's glassed you. So then he's, Bottle like juice, yeah, yeah, and it was in my auntie's like pub place, and he was just licking bottles off my head. Uh, I'm surprised my head didn't crack open. I was fine, weren't I? Mm. But um, yeah, it was just crazy because like, I don't go. I I I go in for the kill yeah, as well. I don't know I've when had to, to stop. Say, like there'd be a situation, and I say Mel, yeah, because she's ready to go. She's ready to go as well and have it as well. Like if even yeah. obviously we live in a different world now, but if something was to happen. She would be game and on it as well. Yeah. Obviously, that's we don't live I've in that world, been. but that's the kind of spirit and the heart that she's got protection. 
Do you find it funny now you look back at it of how like how different you reacted under yeah. the influence to how you would react to it now? Yeah, totally. I walk away. I take. I turn the other cheek now. Yeah. yeah, totally. Honestly, it's just crazy. I've even stabbed him. He's got like a um. In my here, I've stabbed Can him in the stomach. Can you tell us that story? So, because obviously, you know, we would dr used to drink a lot and just be crazy. Well, I used to get mad with him as well. And we were in a house and I think an argument broke out. So I thought, oh, now he's going to start. So I just do, I just think, all oh, right, I'm going to get him. So then I went and got a knife from the kitchen and it was a big one, massive one like that from the kitchen. And I've literally... And I shut the door, I, but then the I just door, opened it. So and go then on I then. just went bam, like that. But it only went through so much, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it didn't go. It didn't, a little Obviously, there's a way. scar like that, but it, it but went in, but not to get any arteries on The amount of things you. that, you know... What was the aftermath of the stabbing? Nothing. We're just nothing. make up and... Makeup sets. We're Break just up and, yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> like really. That's how it was. That, we were, it, we we're was just not normal. Actually, we just were like not animals. normal. It's seriously just not normal. This isn't likely, this doesn't shock me, by the way. A lot of my friends, yeah. when I was heavily involved in drugs, yeah. were, that was the like yeah, yeah. catalyst yeah. for their relationship. Yeah. yeah. And it's fascinating to just hear it again. It's bringing back memories, yeah. actually. Yeah. <laughs> Same with Wild Man as well. Wild Woman stabbed him in the yeah. belly. Yeah. Yeah. It, was just, it was normal. It's just normal. Yeah. We'd have an argument, yeah. And I think, oh, let me go and it, air it out now. I just jump on my bike, jump on the bike. I'm driving down the road. Next minute. Boom. Boom. I'm on the floor. But I'm <laughs> pretending. I'm pretending now. I'm on the floor, but I'm pretending that I'm dead. Because you're scared. Dead. That I'm dead. And when she's come out, I'm going, oh, babe. I've jumped out. I'm going, Do you understand? It was this chaotic. Oh, my goodness. Let, let me ask you about that. the role of smoking the white stuff then, because with Wild Man, he had a girlfriend called Wild Woman. They were both, same as you guys, stabbing, you know, yeah. everything. Yeah. She stabbed him. And, um, when he started smoking the white stuff, he completely changed his personality. Yeah. And she became like more wary of him because it was like he would do anything. He had no conscience. Yeah. It was like he was a different person. He'd yeah. stay awake for days smoking that and, and meth. Yeah. Did that become an issue with you guys? Yes. Um, your addiction? Yeah. Yeah. And how, did you have to hide it or did you like, were you like trying to get him to start? What was happening? It went, to, got to the point I wouldn't go near him. Because of that. Because of it. In because the how did you first find out he was doing that? In the beginning, it was just anywhere. normal. Yeah. It was kind of just normal, like, and there weren't no yeah, signs of weren't. anything. Was it straight was away? And, okay. He was loving and thingy, but mm -hmm. then the red flags and things happened. But I was in too deep then. Yeah. That I, because I knew the, the the nice person, and then when they're not so nice, when he was on that, you mm. see. So that's when, um, after a while, I would not go near him because I could not trust him. But were you worried that he'd just go off and do anything at that point? Yeah, would literally anything. It? Yeah, because I would, I would, would go just... out when I was obviously selling, I was selling it. So then I would go out and just have cheeky ones and stuff like yeah. that. But I was obviously maintaining, making money, clothes, whatever. But just having a cheeky one and then coming back and then just drinking. But I was just a madman yeah. because there was people, there was mad smokers that had sights on them like, smokers like that and then i would go and meet them at three in the morning to give give them some bits yeah. of food and then next minute i bought a laptop or some goods off them we, we wake up we hear noise outside and then he's outside rifling 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 the car for the laptop or whatever so i'm going out with swords at like five in the morning and just it was just it was just chaoticness yeah wasn't it? it was it was just a uh, awful did and you, you were saying how you kept yourself sort of looking you know, yeah, fresh you and tell. clean. No one could tell that I was no, smoking. No I one could tell. What they need could to you do. tell? No, what, when he's on it? Psychologically, yeah. I bet my behaviour. Even though he's trying to hide By it. his behaviour, yeah, but not just by looking at him, no. Because I'd, I'd, I'd still have size. I'd still be like 14 stone. He would stone. just look fresh, I'd still look normal. Fresh, like clothes. you wouldn't think he was a, he like doing that kind of Didn't stuff. Didn't you start to behave in a paranoid way though? Yes, very yeah. paranoid. Is that what you noticed? Yeah. Because he would say some things and I'd know. When he you was, were paranoid, Dwayne, what were you thinking? Was, did you have certain things that you thought about, like certain people were coming to get you? Nah. He'd I, think I, that I, I'm... It was more... It was more... Because I didn't care who come to get me. It's about relationships. I'd be, I'd be thinking it was more, more relationships. Jealousy. Paranoid, security. jealousy, etc. And it, it didn't help that obviously Mel had a little bit of history and then 
Yeah, there was behavior. There was behaviors there. What I was trying to change within Mel to make her obviously into a lady and carry herself a certain way. So that's where a lot of um, confrontation and was there because yeah. I was trying to control M Mel to make it happen when it sh was, should have been more authentic. But it, we got but, there in the yeah. end. <laughs> yeah, but it was. But it, it was, was a lot of me trying to, to relationship, wasn't it? Yeah, but it was more control to to not control in that way it was control to to protect control to drop certain behaviors out yeah so that it would protect her and her personality and her as a person rather than control as in yeah yeah, yeah. how long did the chaos last hold on here is a word from today's sponsor aura if you google someone you can find out all kinds of personal information about them this information is accessible because of data brokers who profit by selling your information to robocallers, telemarketers, spammers. You can use my link, https dot dot forward slash forward slash aura dot com. Aura is A-U-R-A -A, forward slash Sean Atwood, S-H-A-U-N-A-T-T -T Wood to try two weeks for free and see how many data brokers are sharing your info. Also linked in my description box on this YouTube version or scan the QR code on the screen. Aura also monitors your emails and passwords to see if they were involved in a data breach and exposed on the dark web and gives you the recommendations on what to do. Aura has almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need all inside one app. Was it up until you, you got arrested? Last Basically time. until 2012, when I went to jail. 2012, yeah. So how many was years it? was it chaos? 2008 to 2012. What made you guys not break up though throughout all that chaos? Or did you have moments where you turned him off? I think it was the breaks. With yeah. him going to prison, it gave us a break. And I think the love was so strong that I knew the real Dwayne, like, Everyone else, you know, like, didn't like whatever. But I saw the real authentic, the real Dwayne that taught me stuff about God, that taught me other stuff that no one else has. And and I was like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if even I was addicted to that as well because you become addicted to it as well. Sometimes you feel like you can't leave. Like, because I work with a lot of women and it's really difficult, you know, to leave a relationship when you're you're in it. And I, and I but I know that... Also, I saw the real Dwayne. Do you see what I mean? And that's what I loved, the real and, Dwayne. And that's the same as me, that I saw beyond the behaviours of the history in the past, I saw the real Mel beyond the behaviours. And that's the, the same as what... The caring, the loving, yeah, and the, you the know... nurturing and Nurturing and the Mel. And, like, obviously, we've all got trauma and we've all got... You know, devalue ourselves, and, you know, you live in, you know in an area where you don't respect yourself and you some some girls do but some girls don't and I was one of the ones that just didn't have any respect for me um and it's really sad to be honest it's like the norm in them places it's like dogs everyone sleeps with everyone yeah and this it's that's just everyone sell drugs take drugs party sleep with everyone like what you see on the soaps that's just part of because I find it a lot like I see it a lot now in my line of work like, like the little areas that I like I work in and with the young girls that they're all sleeping with everyone they're all boyfriends yeah friends. Yeah. 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 yeah it's just it's, it's, awful it's but it's that, that culture, kind of sad. culture you know that like um, yeah it's really sad really really sad so then Dwayne um, and I were like you know just um, violent towards each, towards each other and then I think what happened was Dwayne went to prison Whilst he was in prison, I had my little um, cousin staying with me. And that's when the guy that Dwayne robbed the money off thought he would come to my house. Knowing he's I, inside. Yeah. Knowing he's inside. But I was out before and he never come. So on camera I can see and he's like knocked on the door and I think, did he break in? Mm. Or did... I don't know, but he got in my house anyway. Is he the guy with the shotgun? No. no. So this is another guy. So he come in my house at like two, three in the morning and he was demanding my car keys. And I was like not giving them. And then my cousin was going mad and telling him to get out. But in the end, he just took them. 
and went and stole my car off the drive. So, yeah, um, so I had to report it because it wasn't my car, it was hired. So, because I hire a lot of cars, do you see what I mean? And um, so I had to report it missing and then they didn't find it for, I don't know how long, probably a day or so. When um, did you tell Dwayne what had happened? When? Yeah. You rung me that. Did you yeah, give me the, the next day phone. on the prison phone? I told then, you. Yeah. But then he ended up coming to the jail. <laughs> <laughs> what was your reaction when you first heard? I thought he's a, he's, a, he's a mug because I've been out all that time. He's known where I was. Yeah. And even I'd even, I'd had seen him and stuff since then anyway. I'd been with him. Do you understand? And I think I even might have conked him with a Lambrini bottle as well. Like he'd, 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 he'd been around me and, and thingy. Do you understand? So when I heard that, I thought, you... It's just, it's just cheesy. Why are you going to go there? Because you know that I'm 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 in jail. And I can't like obviously defend, defend myself because you know he's, he's but he male. But he was like that anyway. He used to target try and get vulnerable people, especially young him. people, kids, even to today. Um, but he ended up coming in jail and bouncing on the landing. How soon oh. <laughs> after the phone call did he show up in the jail? Was it a week? Two weeks? Oh. Something like that. Yeah, oh. it yeah. was, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, and he, he accidentally bounced around the landing. Yeah, and then Mel was even saying, oh, then, oh, I don't allow it, rah, rah, rah. But then I couldn't stop I'm myself. Because I'm just too nice, isn't I? <laughs> what happened? So then I just slapped it on him um, with my fist, give him a few hot ones and that, and just run him off the landing. Yeah. And was there any consequences for that or did that fizzle out no nah, it fizzled out because me and him would always for as a as a kid he used to i'll be in the, the, the hairdressers i've just got my hair cut i just made a bit of money that day i'm getting my hair cut it's early doors i've already been out already done my bit of work fresh new trainers i'm getting my hair cut now here come walking in see that i've i've, I'm, I'm, I've got money and he'd be like in the mirror like out and thinking oh here we go because he's probably just come from his baby mum he's broke I was an Ernerton I used to make money yeah so he's like I've come out the seat and he starts slapping me up that's at a young age so but then when I went secure unit I started getting bigger I'm going jail then that's when tables are turned now it's mm -hmm. my time now so then he knew and he had been sliced up and chopped up literally lost his life like air ambulance before so I think he had a bit of fear in him because he knew I was game and I was about it he, he didn't ever want it with me. So he didn't, he obviously he done that there, yeah. and he, but it, it fizzled out. He, 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 yeah. he didn't want it. He weren't game, he, he lost his... Um... So before the phone call of Dwayne, when he was inside and he'd sort of been enlightened, yeah. had you had any thing happen between, obviously the car getting stolen and then? So then his ex-partner that he was with at the time then come to my house, rearing up, shouting at me. But I held held it because I don't care. I won't have anyone come in my house and tell me anything. So I, I, I told her back it ain't happening because I think it's because I rung the police. What so was she it, shouting at you? Yeah. About like rigging the police, um, all that kind of stuff because obviously I rung the police. My car's been stolen. Simple. <laughs> That's it. I know, like, you know, you don't always ring the police, but at the end of the day, if I, my car's been stolen, I'm ringing the police. Did she threaten you? Yeah, so she was trying to threaten me to tell me to, like, why have you said this? Or, what are you going to do? And I was just like, well, it was tough kind of thing. But nothing happened. We didn't have a fight or anything like that. She backed, she backed away and, and nothing came of it. So nothing came of it. And then Dwayne obviously then see him in prison. But, yeah, nothing came of it. Were you visiting Dwayne in prison? All the time. There, what was that every like? time. Stressful, um, pressure, like, yeah, it was a lot. Cause yeah, I, she'd, never I miss, literally, she'd never miss a visit. She was always there. I was there, there on time, time, always. All the time. Is it a pain like, in the ass getting in? It's just a pain in the ass just traveling all over the country. Like, cause it was just consistently, wasn't it? Whether it was Brixton, Ramby, Cold and Lee, like wherever it was, I would be there. Wouldn't I? Yeah, parcels being dropped off. I was always When I was nice. like, before I turned it around, I used to meet people, give them parcels, you know, they'd take it in, whatever. Yeah. And what did your family think about him being inside? 
Um, nothing really. I don't think. Like my auntie and that, they're quite posh, but they lived in Birmingham and they didn't really know anything that was going on. Do you see what I mean? They didn't really know all that. But like my family in Slough, they were a little bit different. Um, so they just didn't really take no notice. Mm. My sisters and that were a bit annoyed because obviously they thought I was coming in. They to used to just, spoil just the party. didn't like mm. him, you know. But that's that's because I, I stopped a lot of stuff because she would even be feeding her sister. Yeah. Well, it's that everyone. I gave everyone everything. Do you so, know what like, I mean? a, like a gram, two grams, three grams a day. Just there you go, killing off. And I and I put a stop to a lot of things to say that's not normal. You're giving yeah. her, you're killing her off. Three grams, two grams a day, and she like that, and then going mad when she ain't got. And I just, I just stopped a lot of stuff that was going <laughs> on. You weren't the favourite at all. No, I wasn't. He exactly. wasn't. They hated him. Money was going. She'd have Gucci bag full of dough. Yeah, full of dough. Yeah, we'd be in there, whatever. Family members are coming now. I've got a brain like a computer. Yeah, so if I see something there, I'm like, do you know what I mean? It's there. Come back in. Mel will come in from the thing, and like the bags moved, and there's like a chunk gone already. And then like Mel will, will, will lose thousands and thousands of pounds and won't even notice it's gone. I know. I even one time, I think my little sister was like, "Oh, um, can?" Because I was quite. Oh, I am slim. Um, my sister was like, "Oh, can my mate prepare a pair of your jeans?" Because I had loads of clothes, so I'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, just go in the wardrobe and grab a pair." So they went in the wardrobe, grabbed a pair of jeans. But luckily, she was really honest because there was five hundred pound in the back of the, 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 the um, what, um, pocket. Yeah. And she was There's like, "Oh, I think you've up. left that in there." And I was like, "Oh, I didn't know I had that." Do you know what I mean? But that's what I was like. I just would hide money everywhere and whatever and forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Just crazy. <laughs> all right. So this is all ongoing then. Yeah. You're visiting him in prison. Yeah. And then he has his spiritual awakening. Yeah. How did you find out about that? So he rung me up and he said, Mel, I want to talk to you. You've got to come and see me. Like, and I said, yeah, it's all booked, whatever. Did you tell me on the visit that you had a spiritual awakening or was it just randomly? How did it actually? I think, no, I think it, it I think happened, it but it was a process, process where she knew I was changing anyway. I... The experience I shared, because at the time we didn't know, we just know that I was in this realm yeah. and the light and A, B and C, but then she obviously see through the behaviors that were changing within myself but and I then me calling on a visit. But I could just see from where he called me up and I went up there to speak to him, it's just like I could see, like the transformation of like just the humbleness, like even in, in his eyes, like everything I could just tell. And like, yeah, it was it was just crazy though because when he was just like me or, or this, I was just like, okay, what about if I keep it? Because I was so attached to that. I didn't want to let it go. But then when he said, God sees everything, I was funny. I was like, yeah, that's true. What? When you said, yeah. when I said, if I give it uh, the phone line to someone else, you know, let them take it and I still keep the money. He's like, no, 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 no. He sees everything. And it's so true, you know, I believe that. So just to clarify the viewers that have not seen his story. So he wants you to quit the business at this point, right? Yeah. But you want to just delegate it to someone and still keep the flow. Yeah. And you're saying, you're saying you got to go all the way. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying, I called her up food. on a visit. I said, Mel, if you want to be with me, you got to stop what you're doing. doing. And she goes, oh, well, what if I give the line to someone else and just take the money? I said, no, it don't work like that. She goes, all right, what if, what ifs and buts? I said, listen, there's no ifs and buts here. There's laws. So if it's either me or that, and she yeah. was in our arm for a while, but obviously she, she sacrificed that world, that life, that lifestyle. And even obviously I was benefiting from it within the prison as well with new this, new that, new that, but I was ready to sacrifice and she... How <laughs> difficult was that? Very difficult. It was lots of pain, lots of tears, lots of struggles because I had everything go into not doing anything, you know, and where I used to spunk loads of money and do whatever, it's not like I had a hundred and one loads of savings because I used to give everything, everything. And where Dwayne took a lot of parcels as well. And, you know, it just left me in a situation where I thought, this is it now. I have to do it the right way. 
I have to go through this struggle. And it was hard. It was hard. I'd ring you up. So, like when you'd ring in me. Prison. When you'd ring yeah, yeah. me, he would, I'd be crying on the phone. Because I said, it's all right for you. You're all right in there. Like, cause he, he's got warmth, shelter, no bills to pay. But I had bills to pay. I had things I had to pay for. And it was, it was hard. So while you're, you, weighing, sorry, <laughs> while you're weighing up the options, how long did it take you to decide to make that final decision? Oh, what, to stop doing? No, I decided. And I, I, when I moved to Weybridge, that's when I completely just like stopped. Like I thought, no, that's it. I on can't the visit, do it. On she the visit. decided. I decided. But then, I but then there was decided. a process to then drop yeah. things out, yeah. give people their dough or whatever. Yeah. And so there was a little bit of a process. Up. So then yeah. where I obviously used to keep my stuff, Look, got rid of it all, gone kind of thing. That was it, done. But then like my friend, she was obviously doing little bits and bobs as well. Off the back and end of her. Not just off the back end it of me. Was, she was she still, learned from you. She learned from me, but she yeah. was still doing her own little thing as well. You know, had her own little clientele, whatever. And holding bits and whatever for other people. Um, and then something happened to her where she got tied up and hit with a gun and everything like that to get robbed. And... Can you give us that story in more detail? Yeah, so um, she was at home one day. She lives in some flats and the buzzer went and it was around... I, I don't know if it was around Christmas time, but I just know they had like a high vis jacket on because they were coming to deliver a parcel. So she's let them in. So she's opened the door because she's thought it's someone with a parcel, but it weren't. They were coming to rob her. So they forced their way in. They've tied her up, hit her with a gun. So she was smashed in her face. Um, they took her car, took all of her like sentimental stuff, like going back from Nan and everything and took some money, um, but nothing major. And she didn't have anything there at the time anyway, or a little bit, so she was good. But, um, and I was just like, I went and saw her and I was just like, Luke, you cannot keep it with you. You just, this is such a dangerous game. Like you've just got to be careful, put it there, you know, and just leave it there and whatever. So she started doing that. So obviously I stopped doing what I was doing, moved to Weybridge, completely went clean. And about, I'd say it was probably about a year later. So it? basically. So it was about a year later, um, I get a phone call from, um, like the people in my area to say she's just been caught in the house. The police were sitting there waiting for her. So she was being watched. So it was only a matter of time that that would have been me as well. So basically mine would have been where she was. This girl has jumped straight into Mel's shoes because Mel's jumped out. So there's all that clientele. Put the, food, put the food there, the clientele. So basically that would have been Mel. Yeah. yeah. She jumped into Mel's yeah. shoes, but I, give Mel the automation, boom, and then A, yeah, B, and C. Yeah, and it was really sad because she was pregnant at the time and didn't know it. So I think she'd gone, she got six to three, um, had a baby in prison, but luckily she had a really good man behind her and he, he stayed with her. And then the son then come out and then he looked after the son until she was released. And I'm take my hat off because she's doing really, really well now. She's got her own business. They work really, really hard. And I'm really, really proud of her. So what's interesting about this is it's like you had like the fear of like you were jumping off a cliff yeah. to stop. But Dwayne was calm as if he knew where you were gonna land the whole time. Yeah. And what happened to that woman? It was like the big flash. I bet this, she wished she had a Dwayne there saying, This might happen. Yeah. And then the whole place were thinking that I was the bad guy to come in to destroy Mel and take money, whatever. But then it swings and roundabout, they see that it turned out I came in. And I do believe with everything, it was a with divine intervention a where Dwayne came in to actually save me because I, like I said, I didn't know about God. I didn't know anything she like that. She still looks the same age even, now as she was then. Even mm. when. Do you understand? No the, lie, the people that where she's from. <laughs> she's been saved even even then when I was in Hamill Hampstead and he come out like I started to get synchronicities and stuff happen like 
it was just amazing because we were lying on a couch there was no windows open nothing and we're lying there and we're watching like a, a, a movie and a, a, or a program and part of it comes on and there's a lady that um, has had a car crash and her daughter was in the car and she survived the car crash and she shouldn't have survived and there was a white little feather on the um on the window window screen and they she said that's the angels she was they were protecting me then i got up off the sofa white feather in between us but i was explaining and whilst whilst i was explaining to mel because she got up in the cottage she got up and there was a white feather in between us but when i'm explaining her about, about synchronicities and signs and a b and c that's when we clocked that's on the tv she's talking about i lost her daughter and then the angels communicate through white feathers so when i was explaining that's they was demonstrating it on the tv as well yeah when you were talking mel out of the business yeah were you convinced you could talk her out or she might have like said no way i'm quitting this and what, what would you have done if she said there's no way i'm quitting this no nah, i believed no nah, i didn't believe that she she would not i believed that she would because she 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 adored me she looked up to me she she i was a i was a weld do you understand the amount of stuff that we went through the amount of people that told her a b and c so i knew she would because she knew that that was the best thing to do in her heart that it wasn't going to last and it was going to end in disaster and she knew that i knew the way and i think it's that i trusted him because i'd seen that he's turn it around that I can see that he's changed that I had that trust that everything's going to be okay then she got baptized and, and that stuff like I that, wanted out anyway and I just thought I have to do it I have to do it for me but sometimes the fear of the unknown yeah. and the, the grip that was the of scare money and that, finance. yeah and that was the scariest part of it not having nothing to to down to end up not having even a car at one yeah. point but was that liberating in the end to not be attached to those things yeah in the end it's painful it, you go through painful, a pain barrier but then you appreciate what you've got when you get it the right way and that's what it was with me i think i yeah to a point where i didn't even have a car anymore yeah when i got and i was actually just using my my friend's car to come and visit him and so was it harder to let go of the materialistic things physically or mentally? I'd say mentally. So like your car's going and you close. Yeah, and, and it was just really <sighs> played real emotion on me. Uh, like I felt like I had nothing. Um, yeah, I think it was, yeah, I think both really physically and mentally but i think it was your the identity of that yeah. role the ego of actually people ringing your phone yeah. needing you etc there think, was that kind of um, yeah i think so was hard for you isn't it yeah because i felt almost wanted where i was just busy and everyone wanted me um and then almost like who is mel now you're getting all those calls on a saturday night <laughs> yeah who is mel now like, who is she? And who how many of your I? friends stuck around? So, to be honest with you, I had to break away from a lot of my friends because I think I had to change my environment to order to change me. Otherwise, going back into that environment, I don't think I would ever been able to change and stop what I was doing anyway because it was around me. So I had to break free from that. So the only friend that I stuck by and is, is my friend now that I'm um, really good close friends with and I moved in with her. So she really like took care of me really. And yeah, I couldn't have done it without her, I think. When you lost everything, you had no car, et cetera, did you have confidence in the process or did you think sometimes tell, tell yourself, I've done the totally wrong thing. Why have I listened <laughs> to him? Don't get me wrong. I had thoughts <laughs> and thinking, oh my God, what have I done? Do you know what I mean? Only because I, I didn't have any money. But at the same time, I had the trust 
that I know what he's saying. And then when I started building that relationship with God and, and myself and finding out who Mel is and going to the gym and doing because I never used to go to the gym. I never used to do any of that, did I? No, she'd be, I'd try and get her I to stop smoking. I used to be smoking. smoking top on the window and she's 20 like- 20 fags a day. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And it's only in, then when I'd done the transition, I even stopped smoking. Um, How hard was that? Because people the say gym. that is really difficult. It's really difficult. It was so difficult to stop smoking. But he was like, adamant, you've got to stop smoking. And I was like, yeah, I know. So I did. I stopped smoking because even my friend um, still smokes now. But she she was like, wow, Mel, because I did it. Did you just stop cold turkey? No. Did you, did you go I, down to vapes? I, I went down to these. I think they were the e-cigarettes then yeah. at first. They weren't really vapes then. They were the e-ones. So I had them. And then I just got sick of that in the end. And then I stopped. Um, then, then like the gym, because when I first introduced, because gym has been part of my life from Secure Unit 13. So yeah. when I first introduced Mel to the gym, she's all like, oh, oh, next minute. And then next minute, she's like straight to the squat rack. There could be loads of guys down there. <laughs> yeah, bam, 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 boom, boom, boom. But I even it was, do videos. It was, a pro- it was a process at the time. So I introduced her to knock out all them bad habits and then people on ABC to install the new habits, the yeah. good habits that give you life and yeah. give you abundance. That's why my therapist said, when you stop all that stuff, you've got a hole and you've got to put things in it. Yeah. You've got to yeah. replace it with positive totally. activities. You have to. 100%. Um, have what to. other stuff did you put in there to fill that void? So reading, I read, done a lot of reading because I had a lot of books that um, Dwayne would like introduce me to. So I'd do a lot of reading. Which books resonated the most? So... We had The Secret that I read as well, didn't I? Rhonda Bride. But, um, yeah, The Secret. Is it The Secret? Yeah. Wasn't it? The Law of Attraction. We had that. Uh, we had... What was that other one, Dwayne? What was the one with the D Pak Chopra? What was that one? Seven Spiritual Laws of Superheroes. No, there was um, another one. Joey Dispenser. Joey Dispenser. He Greg, was a good one as well. Braden. Um, um, Louise Hay, um, Joyce Mayers, Joyce Mayers, um, even the, the Bible. Bible. You know, really- it was powerful in itself because I got baptized. I started going to a church in Shepherd's Bush. Um, yeah, that was, was our just, spiritual. Food. That was our spiritual. Yeah, that, that, journey. That, 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 you that know, would follow. That kept me on the right path, kept me going, giving me a hope and a faith. I think I needed that with the transformation that I was going through. I, I needed a faith. I needed hope because, yeah. Dwayne, at what point were you having premonitions of disaster was coming to Mel through arrest or something bad was going to happen? I, I kind of knew all along. It was like she was my angel. Do you, do you understand? And I kind of knew, and that's what the protection was coming in, and it was getting so frustrated. Logically, I probably didn't even understand what was going on because this is beyond the flesh and bones, and it was predestined, and it's in the stars. Yeah. So it was like my, I was getting frustrated that she weren't hearing me to take you to do A, B, and C. So it's like I knew that bad things were happening, and every time I get banged up, the agents will come in, and 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 then I'll get out, and it made me even more mad. And that's yeah. what the consistency, but then once we got it to say, right, come out from there, because you are the company you keep and actually the environment that you're in. Because if you're in, in a, an environment, it's energetic. So it's only the matter of time you become them. So it was when she came out and then I came out, even in the prison when I have to come away from people to be in my own. Because if I was around people, if we were around people mm-hmm. to remind us of who we were, we wouldn't be who we are. Yeah. So it was staying away because they would remind you who you were and that's bringing up old data. So when you were in the prison and Mel was still in the mix and you couldn't help her from the prison, but you knew she was at risk of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How frustrating or how, you know, what was going through your head? I had to get her out of Slough. I said to get out of Slough. And then obviously she had a a A friend Shabs to to do that. And then... She got out of there. That was one, one, um, I just had to get Mel out of Slough, out of these people, because I knew how risky, but she I didn't think, understand. But she I think she so, didn't understand yeah. that. That was her life. Yeah, that was yeah. her life. She did not understand. People didn't understand what I was trying to get. That was all I knew. 
Mm-hmm. Do you see what I mean? I think it's when it's all you know, you don't know anything different. Now oh, I know this world, it's like, oh my goodness, why didn't I ever know about this earlier, you know? But, was it hard to refocus? Yeah, so it was a long journey for because I had to wait two years before Dwayne came out. You had two mm. years, don't you, behind the door. So you're on so your own for two years. For what was two that years, like? I was on my own. It was um, highs and lows, you know, um, struggles. Um, I had a job that um, that didn't last for long. And then I was working with my friend. It was just really, really difficult. It wasn't easy. To go from balling just to working like yeah. a menial job. Yeah. And then like I'd... getting pets. And like, I was like even ringing him up sometimes saying, I haven't even got no money for food. Because it was like that at some times, wasn't it? It was yeah, hard. It was. It wasn't then, easy because I was so used to that lifestyle and having everything. And that, 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 during those moments when you couldn't eat then, were you thinking I could just go back and sell something and make, make this money? Buck. Yeah, but I knew that, uh, no. Because no. I knew that wasn't the right way. I knew because obviously I'd done a lot of my work. So even though I was going through the struggles, I know it was process. all meant to be and it was a process. Wow. Yeah. So it was hard, I'm not going to lie, but I knew I could get through it. And I think it was real divine intervention because even when I got out, remember, I didn't really work before, but I knew. And even on the phones, I knew and I'd say to her. And then yeah. when I got out, we didn't even have money to get our own place. Yeah. And I had to be saving my little whatever, 300 pound a week in the hostel. And I became kind of the the breadwinner how yeah. it should be i started going out and grinding where obviously it was mel before but then it's like the roll turn over and you were taking I, care of me for yeah once. with the cars it's usually me taking thing. care of everyone else because that's what i'm used to i didn't know anyone to take care of me it was hard for you wasn't it very hard because i'm such an independent woman that i didn't know how to receive that yeah Mel, during the two years before he got out, what were your biggest challenges? Um, the giving up smoking, but then that fell off quite easy. Struggling to not pay rent and, you know, the things like that. Not having a car. Had you stopped the alcohol and the weight? Oh, yeah. None she of never, that. Ever no, done I'm the not. White. No, I never done so, white anyway. Um, it was more um, alcohol, but that completely stopped anyway because I didn't really drink unless I was going out, and, and that's I wasn't when she going out. Her most vulnerable. Yeah. When she drunk, so I was like, "Do you understand?" That's when I was very. That's vulnerable. when she was vulnerable, and because I wasn't, open. I was literally, I would black out. I wouldn't even remember the night. That's how. That's how bad I used to drink to the point I'd be oblivious to the point I can't even remember. But they say when you stop drinking and you stop smoking because they are fallbacks for people with anxiety from trauma that your demons rise and you have to face them. Yeah. Did that happen with you? You're sober and you had to face your demons. Did trauma come back up? I don't think the trauma come back up. And I don't know whether that's because I was going to church at Shepherd's Bush and I was baptised and I had was filled. I don't know, like with the Holy Spirit. I don't know. I just felt a sense of peace mm. even though i went through challenges and w whatever but i almost felt like mm. knowing a, yeah a knowing and having that faith and that trust so in a way i was quite blessed i think you know your faith was insulating you yeah and i think i was quite blessed because a lot of people have been through half of what i'd been through would have dealt with that so differently because I know from people I work with now they they go to drugs or they go to alcohol to suppress their trauma or all the stuff they've been through but me it was just the other way around I went more inwards to find out my identity who Mel is Dwayne teaching me the meditation healthy diet eating well gym all that contributed to my transformation what did you plan for the day of Dwayne's release so to get your suit, didn't we? <laughs> for, the for the wedding. No, that wasn't the first day. <laughs> yes, it was. No, it weren't. Because we had to go to the hospital. Hostel oh, and was it? Start and, yeah, and do all that. I, thought I was stopped stopping on the way. way. I even said stop on the way so we could just stop and meditate and pray yeah. on the journey because I was that. Dwayne was very spiritual, I was on a, deep. on a different level, wasn't I? Wasn't you? Just to yeah. recap for the viewers though, so Dwayne had proposed to you marriage on the phone. Yeah. How did that make you feel? 
special, amazing, <laughs> like absolutely excited. Yeah. Did, was it out of the blue? Had you suspected? I anything? never, ever expected it. No. Oh. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I really didn't. Like, you know, I, like we changed, whatever, but I never expected him to like, propose and want to marry me i don't know why it never and the came first to week my... of being out of jail well, it was like rapid wasn't it yeah and so your, it your, your response like... when he said that yes <laughs> <laughs> like that was that happened in dcat didn't it yeah I yeah that so, was DCAT, when he was in yeah. dcat because that was near to the end of his sentence that that happened didn't it how did you feel Dwayne, when you picked up the phone for that conversation excited? yeah i feel, uh, yeah i was excited and I, I knew it was right because i knew We'd come so far from all that crazy chaotic stuff. We'd come so far, and it, I believe that it was it was it was pre kind of destined. Do you understand? And even, yeah, it's yeah, it's cra it's crazy. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> didn't you send your mum round or sister? My yeah, because obviously I got the ring to give to her, and then get the phone. Yeah, and do it like and that, flowers. and all that stuff. Yeah, so it was just a bit more nicer because he obviously is in was prison, in so it was really sweet. And you were none the wiser. No. Yeah. So the day of his release, there was a big buzz about the wedding. Yeah, yeah. a week later, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And so you were planning it. You knew it was going to be a week later. Yeah. So we were planning it. So we like had uh, it was at the registry office, and then after that, we had it at a church as well across the road. So it was really, really nice. Just had like close people, yeah. nothing big, you know, just like really close Sentiment. family. And wasn't it? It was just really nice. And then we all had a really nice meal and get together. And then Dwayne had to go back to Oxford and <laughs> go to home. Uh, Listen to this, right? <laughs> no honeymoon. They knew. No honeymoon. <laughs> they knew, yeah. The, the, the hostel had loads of rooms, empty rooms. Yeah. I was in a room, a double room. Yeah. The night I've gone back, yeah, guess what? There's a big lump in my room. Oh. My <laughs> but I didn't a penny. Do you know? Because obviously they, they they orchestrated it on purpose. But Traps. where I'd, where I'd, all that stuff just went over my head. So I was like, you're right, mate. But they done it on purpose that night. So I didn't spend the night with Mel. Wait, well, I had, I've got a hotel, yeah, up didn't the, I, in up Oxford. the road in Oxford, nice hotel. And he went back and then came in the morning. We had breakfast and stuff like that. Yeah. So it was sweet. So you were at like the Mamazon and he was at the hostel. Yeah. yeah. Was it actually the Mamazon? <laughs> huh? no, I can't remember what. It was it was a nice one in Oxford. Yeah. I can't even remember what it was. And no, she I gave us it's a, an old prison. And she gave us um, it? Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. it's a five star hotel, but it was an old prison. Oh really? Yeah, I know the one. Yeah. It was and yeah. she gave us um um a bottle of champagne yeah. and that, didn't we? Yeah, she as well at breakfast. Now, We've still got it now. We haven't opened it. We've kept it. I guess because you don't drink. Yeah. <laughs> and we just wanted to keep it as well, you know, because and we just kept it ever since. So when, so when Dwayne went in, he was still full of this dark energy. He's got out. You're both resonating now on this spiritual yeah. frequency. So was it amplified because you were together? The the power, the spiritual power, was it amplified? There was, there was a little bit of because obviously I've been on my own for so long. So then so it, was it, a bit it, it was weird. It was getting yeah, it was weird. Even me having sex and stuff. I know it's weird, yeah. But even that, I was like kind of so spiritual. He was so spiritual. Oh, I, I didn't. It just yeah, it was just. Very... It was just crazy. It was just out of this world. So there was so an it was, adjustment. It was an yeah. adjustment, a real adjustment of spending time together. And even Mel would. You say you could do a right. You can't do a left. And Mel would do a left. And I said, Mel, what are you doing? Because I didn't want to break. Like, I was so like. He was so so wasn't like he do it the right way. Obviously, because obviously ten I'm still in now, the world. Bit, like, but he was confined now. like in his own little. Yeah. So you didn't bend the rules at all. No bending the rules. None Not at that all. I bend the rules now, but a cheeky little thing now. Obviously, the, it's slacked a little bit now. But I'm saying at the time. It was like that, wasn't it? Yeah. It was like... Phew. So something like texting while driving, you'd say, was bending the rules, right? No, not that so much. But if the road said, like, <laughs> don't turn thing it, and then she'd do it. And uh, like, just little, little things. Yeah. So there was like yeah. little bits of conflict with, with that, wasn't there? With that, there? yeah. But then we, I got a bit worldly and then we, <laughs> we was in sync. <laughs> How long did that take? I think it was a good, probably... Four or five years? No. What? 
Four or five years until things were right. No, not right. I was going to say you started. Said, no, said, oh, no, until you got wildly. I was going to say. Yeah, because the first few years I did not. I said, I, I read a contract yeah, with God and I said, I won't go into Slough. I won't drink. I won't do anything like that until I finish my prison license. So I was squeaky clean for all them yeah, years. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, squeaky clean and like doing a lot of fasting and even Mel saying, oh, Oh, he, he, look, you're losing your bones and that. Look, you're looking all bony because I was so spiritual and doing yeah, all this stuff for all them years. And then obviously about but four years later when I had a drink. But I used to do a lot of fasting as well with, with And then it started, I? yeah. Because when Dwayne came out, he was vegetarian, everything. So I turned vegetarian. Like we were just on that journey, weren't mm. we? With literally fasting and um, only eating vegetables and stuff like that. Before you were in sync then, what did you find the most frustrating about Dwayne? What when we before we was so in sync? He's got out of prison. You're not in sync. What was the most frustrating about him? His behaviour. Do you feel like you're at couples therapy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, don't I was know. probably. Too, I'm not saying. What was it then? Was it too? Was I too just, right? Not right. Just, just too light. Too want to do things the right way. Or I weren't naughty Maybe. anymore. Was it the naughty that you was attracted to? It was probably <laughs> because he was just um, very, just good. Prim and proper. Humble yeah. and laid back. And sometimes say, oh, you're like a granddad thing. Because yeah. I just wanted to I grind. Know. I just wanted to grind. I was going to say, you've gone from like, finding him attractive for being yeah. the bad boy. Yeah. And you're now. That like, good the, boy. Yeah. The, yeah. The complete polar opposite. Yeah. So it was getting adjusted for both of us, I think. Do you know what I mean? Because we were completely different people now. And they weren't, we weren't the people that we were when we, be, yeah. when we met each other. But also we still did go on that journey together because I, I was there every visit, phone calls. So it's not like we had much to adjust, I'd say. No. It was just no. more getting used to things when he came out because it was just... I think with anyone when they've come out of prison anyway, they can't, yeah. it's hard to just adjust anyway, isn't it? Because you used to be in your own company, your, your own, own company, cell. Your own your own space. Like. like, it's everything. It's all the loudness. It's everything, I think. How long after out. Dwayne's release then do you think that you guys were finally in sync? I'd say after like a month or two, it was back to normal, wasn't it? Because when did we move? I think when we moved Or in, was it after Oxford? Yeah, because I think Cause we, we moved weren't in. living together. Yeah, we weren't living together until because we... he was in approved premises and he had to stay there for a while, didn't oh. you? So because we weren't really living we together, we were in sync. It's but not there that we were just little bits and it was more that understanding of, of of getting to know each other, the new the new us, and I think and it the was way of more... thinking and more and values and this that and what's what's not, and so it was more. And I think it was more. He was in Oxford and I was living at his mother in law's. So we wasn't seeing each other all the time because I was working, he was working. But so I'd just go weekends. We'd, weekends, we'd, yeah. or I might go up and see him sometimes during the week. We so could go and gradual. have some dinner, whatever. So it was gradually because it's like he was still kind of like in prison. Hmm. And did it feel like it was starting in like a new relationship? Yeah, yeah. Excited for the weekend. Yeah, excited to see each other at the weekend. <laughs> hmm. When did you finally move in together? So how long was it? Last week. Months? A few months. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. probably about four months. After yeah. four months after you yeah. released. Because I'd done the, the yeah. saved the, some dough up. Because we had to do it from scratch. Scratch. Mm. Saving every little penny. Yeah. And then. How did that feel to rebuild from scratch? Cost. It was good. It was to good, To where we it? are now. It was, oh it was, God, it was, yeah. it was, it was amazing. That? that was 2014. 14. So 10 years next, next oh, year. Congratulations, yeah. guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What were the biggest challenges of rebuilding? Oh Lord! Working for someone, being a yes man. Do you understand? I don't like being told what to do. Never have, never will. Um, yeah, that's true. And even like with commissioning and stuff now, like you're under some. Do you understand? Like you want to be financially free, do what you want. Not that you all just slob it off. You still would still do what we're doing what and we're serve people. About because that's but our we passion. don't have to, and you're not under. Do you understand? So I think the hardest thing for me is with having to work for someone. Yeah. And now obviously the freedom's there. When did the freedom arise? How long after the grind? So what, 2007, wasn't it? No, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> I mean not 2007, 2000, I mean 17. 2017. 
you started your own businesses at that point. Yeah, you moved yeah, that's the when jail. it started to really hit off and Get things recognized. started happening. So fourteen, so three years. And was that us. buzz better than any drug buzz? Yeah, yeah. It was just serving like just people, amazing. But we were like, we were still comfortable. I think after even a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, because we had the, the thing, so, but we weren't because, doing a nine till five where but, you have to be there. Yeah, so it was just nice. When we've got our own business, you know, because then it was just on our terms more. And then changing people's lives. Like, I'm just, like, there's a client there, and the client's getting out the car. You've just changed their life. And then the mum and the family's coming over to the car to say, I think I need to do some work with you as well. And as they're walking off, you're thinking, you're not serving them any food, you're serving them the food of life. Yeah. Do you understand? So, we've changed the product. We're still hustlers. We've just transferred our skills. Yeah. And now we're showing people how to live life, how to become free from that prison and that hell on earth, yeah. because that's all it is. And then we help people with, with the methodology that we've created within our courses and programs. Yeah. Isn't it, Mark? Yeah. And do you think as people can see in your eyes that you guys have healed yourselves, they want that magic? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think and our inspirational story as well really gives them hope that they can transform. And it's like we have that connection with them straight away. It's just, it's amazing. Beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. So what do you want from life now? Yeah, what's next? I don't think it's what we want from life. I think it's what life wants from us. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but in, in coherence, working together, mm. life. I don't want to get battered no more. Yeah. I think um, it's just to be able to serve as many human beings as possible out of that prison within the mind and that hell. And in return of serving humanity is live financially abundantly. Mm. So it sounds like you live in the present. Yeah. Yeah. That's important. And I'm And I'm just building and building and want to really build my women empowerment because I want to empower women and I just want to transform them and I am doing that anyway on a day-to-day -day basis but I'd love to do it on a higher level and you're going to be setting up a YouTube yeah hopefully by the time this video is yeah. out yeah mm. yeah what a fantastic inspirational story and it's Definitely. the transition yeah how you evolve as human beings it just makes it so interesting I see mm. Jen got really excited <laughs> Join that. You know, I'm getting excited asking Dwayne about what's it like getting a car run, tire running over your head. <laughs> yeah. Jen likes the psychodynamics. Yeah. But I think yeah. a lot of the viewers who are watching this, it, it makes you happy. It makes you warm inside to hear stories yeah. like yeah. this. Success stories, uh, it genuine is. ones. Is yeah. Like that. It's, yeah, so inspirational. And just knowing that you can get out of that lifestyle and you can make that change, but you've got to want it. You gotta want it. And like you said, you know, that was your identity yeah. was being this kingpin. Yeah. And to to give that up, to sacrifice yeah. who you were to go into the unknown. For most people, they're stuck in their comfort zones, they won't yeah. do it. Yeah. You yeah. have to take the leap. Yeah. And is that your most valuable piece of advice you could give today? Yeah. Take the leap. Yeah, you deserve it. Like we thought that we were them people beforehand. And when we come out and found who we truly are, yeah. our true authentic people, then that was when freedom's there and people and it's deserve it. connecting to that heart. Yeah. And that's when you can connect to the heart, that's when everything will just work out just oh right God, for you. Is it? What, a powerful, <laughs> what a powerful way to end the podcast. Yeah, thank you. That is yeah. absolutely amazing. Yeah. So all your all the links are in the description box. Please support what they're doing. If they've got a new channel, um, go and subscribe. And if anyone out there, you know, needs any kind of assistance, whether you're a school, a government body, concerned parents, um, contact these guys. And as you can see, the authenticity is just resonating from them and uh, you're in good safe hands. All right, Thank give you. us a hug. Thank give you. us a hug, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, come here. Oh, bless you. Thank you. That was such a nice ending. Oh, brilliant, yes. Well done. Come Fantastic. here, Cheers. Amazing. 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 So Gadfly Press is hugely proud to announce the publication of Killing Escobar and Soldier Stories by Peter McAleese. 
If you've not seen our podcast we've done with Peter, check it out. And the book is now available worldwide on Amazon in all formats. And Peter was hired out of Scotland, mercenary by the Cali cartel, to assassinate Pablo Escobar, one of the most famous gangsters in the history of the world. The mission is all detailed in the book, as well as Peter's many soldier stories from various countries and continents of the world. So mind-blowing, gripping, as seen on BBC TV. This is the book, the story that Killing Escobar is based on, Peter McAleese's testimony. The link will be in the description box below the video, available worldwide on Amazon. Cheers. I kill you! I yeah! A knife and a cosh and all that, like, yeah! And he's looking at me, and we went white, and then he's gone, like. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about a tough guy that fascinates us? Imagine I'm hearing that, I'm thinking, I'm not going down today. If I go down today, yeah, I'm dead. We're bringing you the very best of our interviews with Britain's hardest men. They made the mistake of bringing Billy Cubs, iron bars and knives to a gunfight. No rules fighter bash, Stephen the Devil French, and my best friend, Wild Man. Over two hours of terrifying tales of punch-ups, stabbings. That's what happens in that world. You, you leave people long enough, they get enough rope chain themselves. Attempted murders and exceptional all-round hardness. 